chapter 13, The Great Potato Burglary. Ah, great take up, shaking the bars of his cage. Typical. I mean, minutes ago, I was just locked up in a cage, in a cage in a room full of historic warriors. Now you've swallowed the key and set fire to the room. Flap up and wake up Kamikaze and then put out the fire. Say pretty please. <laughs> Choke toothless to Bradley. Pretty please, bald hiccup in the loudest whisper he could whisper. Toothless flew unsteadily up to the beams where Kamikaze was sleeping and woke her up by shrieking softly, no key, no key. And hurry up before flying back to deal with the fire. Kamikaze took charge of the situation. Of course she did. From the moment she opened her eyes, she got up, calmly balancing on the beam, for all the world as if she was safely down on the ground, rather than almost 20 metres up in the air. She unwound another rope from around her waist and threw the metal end of it so it snapped around the beam from which Hiccup's cage was suspended. She pulled to check it was secure and then swung out, clinging to the rope, um, and landed on the top of Hiccup's cage. Camp Carsey wriggled down the outside of the cage and looked hard at the lock on the door. She felt it in her pocket and brought out a long pin-like instrument and uh, stuck it in the, hook, the lock, wiggling, wiggling it expertly from side to side. That was so brave of you, she whispered, for a boy, of course, leaping down into the soup like that. We'd never have found out where they kept the potato if you hadn't done that. He, he got considered to telling her it had all been a total accident and then thought better of it. <laughs> oh, you know, he whispered modestly back, it was nothing. Ah, I do that kind of leaping all the time. <laughs> what are you doing? Picking the lock, replied Kamikaze airily. Locks are nothing to us, Bob Butler's. Um, No prisons can hold us. We're as wriggly as eels. We're as jumpy as crickets. The lock suddenly clicked loudly and the door of Hiccup's cage swung open. Your exit, my lord, grinned Kamikaze. He could scrambled out of the cage and dropped down onto the banqueting table below, unable to believe his luck. And now, friend Kamikaze, for the vegetable that no one dares name, we haven't got a lot of time. Indeed, they haven't. Toothless had tried to snuff out the fire on the polar bear rug by smothering it with his wings, and when that didn't work, he threw homemade metal champagne on it. The flames sprang up a metre high and the fire spread to a nearby chair. Oh, dear, 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 dear wailed Toothless. Dear, toothless messed up all oh, Toothless's fault. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Toothless, he got ordered, stop making the fire worse and come over here. We're going to need your help to steal the potato. Toothless flapped over, his guilt making him unexpectedly obedient. I want you to melt the ice in the casket, said Hiccup. But, 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 but the squealers, whimpered Toothless. Hiccup wound his scarf around the little ear dragon's ears to act as ear flags. He looks so sweet, doesn't he look, with Hiccup's scarf around his ears. Um, the, that sound could, wait until Toothless is finished, yes, yeah, melting the ice, just in case you do set off. The squealers, he explained to the kamikaze. The sound could stun a dragon as titchy as Toothless if he's too close. Titchy? Huff Toothless. Toothless, not like the word titchy. You're looking up the burglary expert, said kamikaze. There's no way I'm going to set off those squealers. By some miracle, all the hysterics were so dead to the world that not even all this noise and commotion and a large flat fire blazing in the middle of their great hall had woken them up. They snored on, oblivious, trembling with terror and flying rather erratically because he was weighed down by his fur coat, his large meal and the scarf around his head that was slipping over his eyes. Toothless flew over the waving tails of the squealers. This was very brave of him, but if you looked down, he could see their horrible black with the feather on the teeth and to a dragon as small as toothless it was like wandering casually in front of a pack of lions with open jaws. Hovering above the casket he was so scared that for a moment his fire hole slid up and he couldn't breathe out a single flame only clouds and clouds of bluey grey smoke. Relax whispered Hiccup on the table breathe deeply no pressure you've all the time in the world. Hiccup was trying to sound so calm as he could as calm as he could, even though half the room was on fire. All the time in the world, Frank Hiccup, uh, 
nervously. Just relax, go to your happy place. The nails of the squealers began to twitch as they sensed the smoke. Ah! Puffed Toothless furiously, practically disappearing. He was making so much steam. To Toothless is ha happy place, happy place, not here. <laughs> to hiccups and dense relief, Toothless's final indignant snort ended in a big breath of fire that engulfed the entire task casket. Don't set fire to the potato, Hiccup reminded him. Set fire to this? Don't set fire to that, complained Toothless. Mr Hiccup just being such a big bossy boots. He should stop being a bossy boots and give a dragon a chance. But he made his flame small and directed it steadily at the ice around the potato and slowly but surely the ice began to melt. Meanwhile, Kamikaze climbed back up to the ceiling again and wriggled along the beams until she was directly above Norbert's papa. She let herself down on another rope so that she was hanging like a little spider about a meter above the casket. And then she round the rope around her ankle and flipped upside down. Wow. She waited until Toothless had finished melting the ice and let her flap back off back to the safe distance of Hiccup's shoulder. Right in front of Norbert Pe Norbert's papa's frozen staring eyes, Kamikaze reached into the casket and carefully, delicately removed the potato with the arrow stuck in it on the bed of ice. Hiccup held his breath. If the casket was brood we trust, this would be the moment that something might happen. Look at her. I love her. She is dangling upside down. Can you see? And those are the nails of the squealers waving gently. And if she touches one of them, she's, she'll, she might set them off. But there did not seem to be any booby traps. Kalakazi swung there. Potato on one hand. Norbert's papa wobbled for a second on his stand, but he was still grinning ferociously, his eyes staring straight ahead at nothing. He was dead after all. The snores of the sleeping hysterics rumbled peacefully through the quiet hall. Kamikaze put the potato in her pocket. She's done it, she's done it, she's done it, whispered Hiccup to himself. Kamikaze was about to turn herself the right way up again and climb the rope, but then she spotted. Whispered Hiccup. Kamikaze couldn't resist. She reached in and picked the something else out of the casket. For one second, it seemed like it might be all right again. But it turned out that the frozen body of Norbert's papa was very carefully balanced. And when the second weight was removed from the casket, it began to dip slowly backwards. And then gathering speed until the entire body crashed like a giant tree trunk into the waving forest of squealers. Down below. <coughs> Squeal the squealers. The noise they made was simply ear splitting. The glass of the frozen casket shattered into pieces and the ice inside fell to the floor. And all over the room, the hysterics that bought the fright as if electrified, blearily opening their eyes and saying, What's that? What's going on? To each other. Even with the scarf and Hiccup's hands over his ears, the poor old Toothless nearly fainted from the no loudness of the noise. Watch out, Kamikaze! yelled Hiccup. No, but not Joe. Woke up and threw his double headed axe straight at Kamikaze dangling from her rope. Kamikaze saw the axe coming and let herself drop. I'm going to have to finish that because this is quite a, a long chapter. We'll have the rest of the chapter tomorrow.